Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Gore's new film is called An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power. Before we go any further, I need to let you know that I've met Al Gore. Nearly 30 years ago, U.S. Senator Al Gore from Tennessee was on the campaign trail in support of other Democrats. Michael Dukakis was running for president, with Lloyd Benson for vice president. As news director of a radio station, I had an opportunity to interview Gore. Back in those days, every station had a piece of equipment called a cart machine. You inserted something that looked like an 8-track cartridge into the top. When you pressed the green button, the device would play whatever was recorded on the cart, a commercial, public service announcement, or song. Anyway, getting back to Al Gore, when I asked him a question, I felt like I was pressing his green button. Gore answered back with what sounded like a pre-recorded announcement. The future vice president was mechanical and unemotional. I would like to say that he was like a robot, but that would be an insult to automatons everywhere. Al Gore is still spitting out those pre-recorded speeches, but now it is through his so-called documentary films, which I consider to be poorly done science fiction. As if we haven't already had enough reason to debunk the concept of man-made global warming, new information was revealed in a research report released by Dr. James P. Wallace III and his colleagues on June 20th. The peer-reviewed study found that adjustments to raw temperature readings cooled past temperatures and warmed recent temperatures. In other words, global warming advocates adjusted the data to prove what they wanted to promote. They place most of the blame for man-made global warming on carbon dioxide, but does that really make any sense? It can be shown that the concentration of carbon dioxide was much higher in the past, so why is today's concentration considered dangerous? Sometimes they even use the word toxic. Consider this. Many people who are upset about global warming also share a concern about deforestation affecting the Amazon rainforest and elsewhere. There's even talk about allowing certain sections of Detroit to revert back to nature. You know, let the vegetation take over. The ironic thing is, no, we're not calling this the inconvenient truth. We'll get back to that shortly. But now, as I was saying, the ironic thing is that plants need carbon dioxide to flourish. Remember that photosynthesis lesson from biology class? Here's something else ironic, the Bohr effect. It's named after Danish physiologist Christian Bohr, who showed in 1904 that increasing the carbon dioxide content of blood increases the amount of oxygen released from hemoglobin. In other words, if we decrease the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, less oxygen would be delivered to our brains, other organs, and muscles, and we wouldn't have any intelligence left to refute global warming. Al Gore is too shrewd to be stupid. I believe he's really quite intelligent, perhaps too intelligent to believe in man-made global warming. Either that or he believes he's entitled to more privileges than the rest of us. Which brings us to the inconvenient truth. The National Center for Public Policy Research has determined that Al Gore spent nearly $22,000 on electric bills from August 2016 through July 2017. That information comes from public record requests and people at the Nashville Electric Service. In fact, in September, his home consumed 34 times the electricity used by the average American family. And yet Gore has the nerve to tell us to reduce our home energy use. Now that is an inconvenient truth. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.